Yeah, welcome. Uh, this is uh, the first time I've uh, been doing a talk about home automation. Um, so uh, please forgive me if it's still a bit rough around the edges. Um, uh, in the background, you can see uh, a picture of my house, and this is what I'm going to be talking about a little. Um, so what are the plans? Well, uh, first, I'm going to be uh, talking a little about the hardware setup. Um, then everybody of you is going to be asking, uh, um, do you hear sound or could you? Yeah. OK, great. Um, then uh, everybody's going to ask me, why not use something existing? Um, so I'm going to explain a little why I don't want to use something that exists. Um, I'm going to show you a little uh, the software setup I whipped up. And then I'm going to give you a little test drive uh, on uh, the demo I prepared. Um, then I'm just going to give a little outlook on what I'm planning on doing. And let me say, this is this talk. Uh, I think I came back to one of my traditions in which I submitted talks for stuff I haven't built yet. Uh, and that sort of always was a sort of a, a positive pressure uh, to have get stuff done. Um, so this time it was uh, quite a challenge because I had a lot of moving parts that I sort of had to get to work together. Uh, so I didn't get quite as far as I wanted, but at least technologically, uh, I, I, I did the full stack. Um, so I think I'm going to be able to show you some nice stuff. So my hardware setup. Well, first of all, for home automation, you need a home. Uh, for that, I'm using Grandpa's house. Uh, and well, uh, the, the picture over there, uh, that's a picture of my, uh, my grandpa. He passed away uh, quite some years ago. Um, he built this house on his own, um, with his own hands uh, in the 60s. Um, and then I came and tore it apart uh, in 2016 to 2018. So we replaced the heating with some geothermal heating. We put solar energy panels on the roof. Uh, I have a battery buffer uh, in, the, in the basement. We now have air conditioning in the house. Well, it's not the, the type of air conditioning where you can turn on the, the, the typical American 14 degrees Celsius or something like that. It's sort of like it brings fresh air in. Um, and everything is sort of automated with uh, Kinex. Uh, so if you have a look into the breaker uh, box uh, of my house, you can see some breakers uh, at the top, but most of it is sort of completely consumed by insanely expensive Kinex hardware. If I had known that it's so expensive, uh, sort of that, that's sort of like an entry level car. Uh, just in uh, electronic components. Um, but it actually is fun playing around with them. Um, I, I mentioned that I uh, have a battery buffer in, in my basement, and that's this little thing. Sort of like say, stores uh, 8 uh, kilowatt hours uh, of solar energy in my batteries. Uh, and that's what I'm currently working on. Because, well, today the sun was out, so. I'm pretty sure that I'm uh, currently working on uh, on uh, sun energy. Um, and in every room, I have these little um, um, touch panels. They are also uh, thermostats. Everything is uh, KNIX. And uh, yeah, so uh, well, up to now, I didn't have a smart home or anything. It was just an insanely expensively wired uh, normal house. You had switches. If you turned them on and off, the lights went on and off. And so, well, not, not very smart. Um, so the components I, I have, um, the heating uh, and thermostats. So the, the thermostats are in every room. And uh, the KNX uh, actors for uh, turning on and off the valves, uh, they're in the basement. Uh, every light is dimmable. Uh, is also via KNX. 
the window shades I can uh, drive up and down. Um, every window or door has a, a sensor to tell me its status, if it's open or closed. Um, the cool thing is every power outlet, ah, let me move over here a little. Uh, I think I'll just shrink myself so I won't block or I'll just do it this way. Ha, huh, better. Um, um, every power outlet is switchable uh, and um, uh, is switchable and uh, can even measure the power consumption. And that was something that I wanted to really uh, play around with because I think only if you know the power consumption of the devices you have, uh, you can really do some sensible stuff with it. Um, I can read uh, the, the current power production and consumption of my house. Uh, and I can see how full the battery is and what I can sort of just cons I'm, I'm consuming or uh, sending uh, to the, the power network. Um, and all of these moving parts, well, if you want to integrate them, um, yeah, well, you need some industrial protocols and that's when it starts getting interesting for me. So my geothermal heating uh, it uses some Luxon 2 protocol that was actually quite fun because uh, I think the manufacturer wanted uh, 800 bucks per year uh, for access uh, to my uh, to my uh, geothermal heater. So I just uh, went down and sort of like did a port scan, found a, a web port open and sort of could access it, got some XML schemas and could pretty soon found out it's a, the Luxon 2 protocol. And uh, yeah, well, now I don't have to pay anything. Um, the 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 KNX components. Well, yeah. Well, I use the KNX protocol to talk to them. Uh, the energy production and storage. It's also integrated into my KNX system. The smoke detectors. Uh, for that, I have Homatic IP. Because uh, the problem was uh, KNX smoke detectors. When I built this uh, thing, they were sort of two hundred fifty bucks each, and you would have to replace them every ten years to sort of have uh, insurance. Uh, so I rather stuck with a 30 to 40 bucks uh, Homematic IP versions uh, and uh, just integrate them. Mm. Um, the air conditioning, well, that should probably be available via Modbus, but I still have to pay sort of the... Uh, they have a little bit piece of hardware that I um, can use to uh, integrate. Still got to buy that. So. As I promised, you're going to ask, why not use something existing? So this little uh, this little uh, demo here is a, sort of a screen of OpenHab. But I have to admit, I, I intentionally chose the, the one I really like most, what I could find. Um, interesting thing is uh, OpenHab, uh, the lead developer of OpenHab, uh, Kai Kreutzer, he lives sort of 2,000 meters away from me. So we both live in uh, this little town called Oberramstadt, uh, near Darmstadt in Germany. Uh, and But sort of, we never ever had a beer together. I think probably have to change that soon. But it's not just, uh, it's not just uh, Open Hub. We have Eclipse Home, we have Home Assistant, Open Modix, uh, GDOM, IO Broker, and name them all. And I have to admit, I just, shamelessly stole this list from uh, ubidiots.com. Uh, uh, um, I'll share that uh, sort of uh, in, in the chat here, uh, just for the sake of complete, completeness. Because um, the thing is, um, I didn't really care if there is anything existing, because I don't want to have a home automation system. I want to build one. Um, and uh, when playing around with all of these uh, existing, or <laughs> I shouldn't say with all of these, I tried some of them, but one thing I did just didn't want to do is just to click through some wizards and some web UI uh, and have some strange rule editors that you could sort of like just configure everything without really getting your uh, fingers dirty. Um, I wanted to build, build it with stuff I know or, or stuff I wanted to know. Uh, and especially, I wanted to build it with stuff that I can actually use for work. So if I, for example, if I would do everything with OpenHub, I thought, yeah, well, if I now want to automate 
a factory. Uh, so what good would be would my uh, totally awesome uh, open hub skills be uh, worth then? Uh, so the idea was I wanted to use all of the stuff that I would really like to build automation factories uh, and just try it out in my house. So what do I want to do? Well, in general, I want to see my house status. So if I'm uh, someday again, maybe uh, on an Apache con North America, uh, hanging out in some pub with you guys, um, and I want to see how's my house doing. So I can just grab my phone and have a look. Uh, I want to interact with my house, uh, sort of. I don't want to have to get up uh, to flick the switch behind me. Uh, I just want to have some button I could press. Well, I have to admit it's a little childish, but oh well. I sort of like it. Um, and the one thing I really wanted to start to do is start optimizing power. Because I mentioned I have uh, solar power and a battery buffer. And the thing is, every kilowatt hour I sell to the network, I get sort of 14 cents. And every uh, kilowatt hour I buy, uh, costs me 28. So I would really like to try to optimize my power consumption to use as much as my own power as I could. Uh, for example, um, run the dishwasher as soon as the battery is fully charged and I still have some excess power. Uh, maybe if I know uh, I, I, I need to charge my my girlfriend's e-bike or, or whatever stuff needs charging, uh, but today's a rainy day and we're running a little low on uh, power, but tomorrow the weather forecast says it's, it's going to be a nice day. So uh, I thought it would be really cool if I could sort of like just schedule stuff where I will be needing power, but I'm not needing it now. So it could just be postponed to uh, when conditions are uh, better. Um, I want to implement some scenarios. Uh, one of the scenarios I would really like to implement, uh, and I think that has a real value, is, for example, if a smoke detector goes off. Uh, a few weeks ago, one of them had a false alarm in the middle of the night. It just started yelling. And as they're all connected, they all just started yelling. And now you get up in the, in, uh, in the middle of the night and you walk through your house trying to find out which detector actually turned, uh, what was turned on. Uh, so one of the things I, I would really like to do is as soon as a smoke detector goes off, turn on all the lights, open all the shutters. Uh, just uh, if there's a real fire uh, and you don't know how long the electricity will be able to continue, it's really important that the fire uh, firemen can enter through a window or can evacuate you through a window. So, and especially I showed you those little uh, room controllers. Um, so I want, as soon as one smoke detector goes off, that these little uh, controllers have in text glowing in there which one went off. Um, or, well, if I'm going to switch my house to party mode, well, we better crank up the power on the uh, air conditioning. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so my software setup currently, uh, well, of course, I'm using plc 4 x to, to communicate with my house. Um, I'm using IoT to be to store the IoT data. Um, and uh, I dug out something uh, in the trenches. Uh, I don't know if anybody of you has heard of uh, uh, Apache Flex Blaze DS. It was sort of the server side of these old uh, Flex applications. Um, but I'm using that for communicating with a client because uh, Apache Royal uh, is, uh, as the, the successor of Apache Flex, also knows how to talk AMF. Um, and hereby, I can just reuse what I had um, and uh, continue communicating uh, with the client. And as I know, I want to display all sorts of charts uh, because, well, I like charts. Uh, and I know that Apache had this eCharts uh, project. Um, luckily, uh, a few weeks ago, um, uh, a cool guy started uh, implementing uh, a little integration for Royal. Uh, for eCharts, uh, and I'm using that to display some charts. Um, as you all know, those are just some sort of loose ends. You have to tie them together to, with some component framework or something like that. Um, 
I'm using Spring, I have to admit, and uh, that's where I'm currently sort of not using Apache stuff. The only uh, real component framework I remember from Apache, it was the Apache Avalon. I don't know if any one of you has uh, used Apache Avalon. Uh, I remember in the Apache Cocoon times, uh, Apache Avalon was sort of really cool, but as soon as you started using Spring and the others, uh, well, uh, let's say my opinion has changed and I wasn't desiring to go back to the Avalon times. <laughs> yeah, uh, I saw it. Uh, I think, yeah, it, it says, uh, let's move to the attic. So, but hey, come on. I still use stuff that's in the attic. doesn't mean it doesn't work. Um, I probably could have used um, Carafe, uh, but I decided I was already uh, having so many loose ends uh, with this that I didn't want to start working on a uh, Blaze DS uh, integration for OSGI. So uh, yeah, OK, uh, you already uh, mentioned it. Um, yeah, but I, I knew there was quite a bit of work to be done. And being one of the developers of uh, Blaze DS, I knew it's not going to play that well in the OSGI world. Uh, perhaps we're going to change this because we'll be moving uh, Blaze DS to the Royal project and giving it a cleanup. Uh, but I think that's going to be some time. So I stuck with Spring for now. Um, in the near future, I really want to uh, integrate Apache Kafka. Not because I think uh, Kafka is the only uh, thing uh, I could use uh, as sort of a message bus, but I know it's the one used widely uh, throughout the industry. Um, for the smart home logic, I think I'll be playing around with Camel, maybe even Apache Edge. And I mean, well, I'm not scared of the attic. Um, Apache NiFi or probably Minify. Um, Apache Flink will be uh, interesting to have a look at, uh, and maybe even stream pipes. Um, the thing is, I haven't quite decided yet, and I'm going to play around with both of them. And maybe for ApacheCon 2021, um, maybe I'll have some more here. Um, but for me, one thing is very important, low energy consumption. Uh, and that's where I think stream pipes currently might sort of not perform that well, because it, I think it's not made for the really small things. So probably something down Minify Road or Camel Road uh, will be the best fit for me right now. Because, hey, I don't I don't care make, uh, getting my fingers dirty. Um, so here, there should be a picture. Um, I think that must have just got lost. Uh, let me have a look. Well, I think I'll just, ex I'll try to uh, show you the, the picture afterwards. Uh, I have no idea where it's gone. Um, so right now, I have a client in the browser that's built with Apache Royal. Uh, it communicates via AMF uh, protocol with a Blaze DS server. Um, the Action Script 3 model classes uh, I'm using in my Royal uh, project uh, are actually generated directly from the Java model using uh, FlexMojo's Granite IS uh, generator. Uh, that's been, st been stuff I've been using, I think, for 12 years now, and it still just works. Um, uh, on the server side, I'm using uh, Apache Flex Blaze DS. Uh, in conjunction with uh, there was a uh, an also retired Spring project called Spring Flex Integration. I'm using that to integrate Blaze DS. Um, on the server side, I'm also starting an IoT DB server inside the virtual machine because I just wanted to have something I can just sort of like Java jar run and uh, it fires up everything I need. Um, so I gave that a try and it just worked. Um, OK, not everything is sort of out of the box uh, for storing user data, permissions, and stuff like that. I'm, I'm using a, a typical Postgre uh, database. Um, and I think that it's using Spring Data and Hibernate to access it. Mm. So um, and on the last mile, uh, I'm using uh, the PLC for XKNX driver for communicating with my house. Um, and uh, 
for all those who don't know what AMF is, and uh, the thing I like with AMF is just think of it as a strongly typed binary JSON. It allows you to serialize um, large object models uh, and send them over the wire highly efficiently um, and get it uh, serialized, uh, deserialized on in the client side. Uh, and you can even send cyclic graphs because that's one thing I really hated with all the XML and all the JSON uh, formats. It's really hard if you have sort of a user and that's in groups and the groups have members, they are users again. Well, if you try sending that with JSON, it starts getting silly. Uh, with AMF, it just works because it works. Um, and one thing I was really surprised with was uh, the performance of, of IoTDB because I started just pumping everything that's on my KNX bus uh, into an uh, IoTDB instance. And I was completely amazed that uh, about it's about 600 kilobytes of data per day. And I just thought, oh, gee, uh, that's, that's very, very good compression. Um, so my application is built up of uh, multiple modules. Each backend module can provide multiple frontend modules. Um, so when logging in, a user gets uh, the, 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 the client requests uh, the lists of mute modules uh, the user is allowed to use. Then it loads the modules, while Spring Security takes care of uh, only serving to that client the modules he's allowed to use. Because I always hated these highly modular um, backend systems, and the front end is a monolith that just contains everything, it just felt wrong. And with Royal and its module concept, it's really easy to sort of set up this uh, type of fine granular uh, loader application. Um, I usually have uh, three different types of modules. I have main modules. You can think of a main module as sort of the, the main component you have uh, on the screen. Uh, then I have user modules. They are usually for setting uh, user-defined settings. Well, in case of a home automation system, it's probably not going to be that much. But in case of normal applications, well, I think you can think of a lot of uh, cases where you, you could use a user module. And finally, I have admin modules. Those are for setting general um, settings and configuration of the system. Um, inside the Royal application, uh, they have something called Crux. Crooks, I hope I pronounce it correctly. Uh, and you can think of Crooks as sort of like a lightweight spring in the browser. Uh, you can uh, set up um, a Crooks context where you have your controllers, your services, your views, and it, it completely handles the, the dependency injection and uh, is a complete event uh, handling framework. Um, and uh, the cool thing is every module that's loaded has its own little sub context. It's sort of like a sub spring context and all the beans in there are wired. And if they need something from the parent context, the, the contexts uh, are wired together. It can access uh, services provided by the main context. So it makes uh, writing modular uh, web applications really, really easy. Mm. So I promised it's going to be demo time. And now it's going to be the next moment when I'm going to start becoming nervous. The good thing is, a few minutes ago, the sun was still out there. I really hope you can, yeah, yeah I think you can still see my window over there and my light up there. Um, and here I have this little application. And uh, what you can see here is uh, my completely uh, crappy skills at using uh, an SVG editor. Uh, usually, you could imagine that this thermometer should have been green in the middle and not on the outside. But I, uh, I was working on these SVGs for about four or five hours and finally just gave up. And I'll just uh, demonstrate. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm demonstrating my, my ability of uh, creating software, not of drawing SVGs. Uh, what you can see here is uh, some live values 
uh, of the thermostats of all rooms uh, in my um, in my house. You can see the office I'm sitting in here. I've been sitting for quite some time. The heating is currently off, so uh, my MacBook, my factory, and myself uh, managed to get the temperature up a bit. Um, I have a, the other um, module I have um, is um, this is uh, the the eChart integration I, I was uh, talking about. Now, please don't be confused by the squiggly graph. Uh, I'm sending over a hash map. I just haven't figured out uh, how to configure eCharts to uh, display these little time values uh, as a time series. Uh, but uh, the values are real data. Uh, and every time slot, uh, it's actually the, the, the four values are correct. Just the ordering uh, seems to be a little bit of a mess. Uh, up here, you can currently see if I update. Um, currently, I'm pulling out 1,000. Uh, 1.2 kilowatts uh, from the battery. Uh, and that's the total uh, energy consumption of my house currently. Uh, so yeah, this is usually a, a very low one or two digit number that sort of like just uh, equalizes uh, the differences uh, in alternating uh, power uh, production. But I think the thing most of you might find interesting is, let me just shove this over a little bit. Uh, so that's where I sort of ran out of time. Uh, so I'm a little sorry that I don't have something fancier to show you, but at least I can do this. Ha! Oh yeah, I like night mode. Uh, I can raise and lower my, uh, my shades. So you can see the communication uh, with uh, the KNX bus is working nicely. Uh, and all of this is just using Apache stuff. Well, except for Spring. So what's my time? Uh, yeah, I think I'm... So what are my plans uh, for the future? Well, definitely the next thing I want to do is uh, to add uh, Kafka. Uh, as I mentioned, not because I think Kafka is the solution for every messaging problem, but I know it's uh, the one used, uh, especially in the production industry, sort of they, they're, they're having a problem with adopting open source, but Kafka they sort of dig. Uh, and uh, well, I think almost every car factory sort of runs some Kafka cluster. Um, and then I'm going to really uh, enjoy playing around with uh, all of these uh, different types of implementing some logic. Um, I'm, I'm really even uh, going to look really forward to playing around with some uh, machine learning stuff. And the cool thing is with all of this, uh, I know how uh, the, the weather forecast is. I know uh, the state of my battery. I know what my current energy production is. I could even do stuff like fire up some um, energy consuming node for machine learning as soon as the battery is full and I have excess uh, power to do some machine learning on the IoT DB data I collected over the past week um, and uh, maybe optimize some rules for uh, controlling my house. So this is sort of the thing I'm really looking forward uh, to playing around with in the future. Uh, let's see how much uh, time uh, I'll be having because the thing if you have a house, you always have something uh, to do. Uh, and uh, usually, it's uh, not at the keyboard. Um, but I'm really hoping on uh, some crappy weather in, in, in autumn now. Uh, and well, then I'm, well, unfortunately, I can't go into the garden. And then I'll just have to do some coding. <laughs> yeah, so main content-wise, uh, I'd say, um, I have uh, sort of finished what I planned. Now I have a, a little uh, special note because um, today is actually my last day at CodeCentric. Uh, and I know it's quite unusual to sort of uh, credit companies a lot, but I would really like to thank CodeCentric because for the past three years, they paid me uh, to work on uh, Apache PLC for X 
full time uh, and exclusively. And that I think that was the main reason uh, the project is where it is now, because uh, I could concentrate on going, doing promotion and stuff like that. And I would really, really like to thank Codecentric for having done that. I, I, I think you can't expect that from any employer. And starting tomorrow, uh, I actually just signed the, the working contract uh, at during the, the first keynote note the, uh, today. Um, I'll be joining a, a US startup uh, called Matt, uh, effective tomorrow. Um, but the good thing is there, uh, I'll be able to continue my work on plc Frex. And that was one thing that was really, really important for me. I didn't want to abandon plc Frex, um, but uh, I had to uh, decide uh, if I wanted to uh, continue working uh, at Codecentric or if I wanted to continue working on plc Frex. And uh, well, unfortunately for Codecentric, my priorities lie with, uh, with my baby. Uh, and I just wanted to let you folks know, uh, I'll be still on the project active as ever uh, and uh, looking forward uh, for the future. So thank you all for listening. Uh, I, uh, I'm sort of sorry. And now I'm going to try to find that little picture uh, that Crash uh, seems to have gobbled up. Um, let me just have a look. Because I did a really cool, uh, cool picture, and it would be a waste uh, to not show it. So, a lot of logos. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, we have the Royal uh, front end. Uh, it's using eCharts to display chart data. I'll probably also use it for all sorts of stuff because they have really cool widgets for uh, gouges, uh, sh showing some loads, stuff like that. Using Apache Flex uh, Blaze DS, uh, we're probably going to move that. Uh, we already created the repository and we asked for permission for forking. Uh, so we will be forking the, the code base of Blaze DS uh, and uh, continuing to maintain that as Royal DS uh, underneath the Apache Royal project um, using plc for x uh, for communicating uh, with the house um, and using IFGDB and PostgreSQL as a storage system. So I hope uh, I hope you liked it. And uh, I would be really looking forward to seeing uh, you folks uh, turn up on the, the Apache Royal, the IoT DB, uh, the PLC for X uh, mailing lists, uh, or the eCharts. So, because it's really awesome stuff we're doing there, uh, or, or uh, they are doing there. Um, yeah. The virtual background messed up the slides. Um, sorry for that. Um, I did notice yesterday that having a green screen in the uh, the background uh, didn't um, didn't work well at night, um, but good to know. Uh, I'll I'll uh, do it differently the next time. Any questions? Do I have some more time? Because I kept on watching the time for others, uh, but. Yeah, well, uh, the question was why uh, two different types of databases? Well, these uh, the, the type of information is completely different. Um, uh, if I just want to store some user data, I think an IoT DB uh, or a time series database is just not the right thing to use. Uh, so I'm using uh, IoT DB for time series data, and I'm using a relational database for typical relational data because uh, that's what they work best with. Any other questions? Hmm. 
Well, I'll be hanging around here. So, I yeah, timescale DB uh, could have been a, a choice, but being uh, the mentor of the incubating project and uh, now being a part of the PMC of the top level project, um, well, uh, my heart sort of just it just felt right to use IoT DB. Um, MySQL for IoT. Yeah, you could. Uh, I think there is quite a lot of uh, there is quite a lot of uh, different options you have for any of these parts in between. But I, uh, come on, the, the the title of this talk is Home Automation with Apache. So I try to sort of fill the gaps, especially with Apache software. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess uh, I'll now be having a beer, and then I'm going to be watching Julian and his uh, really awesome talk about uh, PLC for X. So, see you in five minutes, and uh, it was a pleasure having you. Bye.